So um, I'm Randy Sainer. I'm a Nebraska Extension Educator from North Platte. Um, I serve the kind of the Southwest area, somewhat along with Erin um, Lavery. She also works uh, south of me some too. Um, but I'm gonna talk a little bit about placing, re pricing replacement heifers and um, kind of go from there. So this is a this is a forecast that we use, and it's really a model that we view that we model. And I'll kind of talk about the model and how the pricing works with the model. But it's just to give you an idea. There's no perfect answer for prices, but at least it gives us a starting point when we're looking at buying heifers or actually saving them, because if it, the same thing is going to happen with saving as far as the prices go, and you know how much you have in your heifers, so. Whether you're saving replacements or purchasing them, this should help you at least figure out your cost and um, if, if purchasing them is gonna be profitable or not, hopefully. And again, it's just a guess, so it's not 100%. But our, our annual cow cost calculator, um, we use that to figure cost of, of production. And if you don't know your cost of production, you need to go into that. And I've got a link here, it's called Cal Cost Calculator. And you can actually put in all your expenses and get, get your actual price um, or cost per cow. Um, and so that, that's a good way to look and see where you're at because we've got three levels of prices, cost that we'll look at uh, per, per, for each, each of the group. Um, and then also the other important thing in this, in this uh, program is the replacement rate. You know, is it 10%, 14%, 20%? We have three different levels. We pick them um, just from talking with producers. You can have any level and I can show you how you can adjust for your replacement rate. Replacement rate is just the number of heifers that you're gonna save to replace the cows that you have to call. And so I figured that if you're not growing your herd, so if you sell, 10 cows, you lose a couple, then you're gonna need, and you got, you know, 100 cows, then you're gonna have about a 14%. So that makes sense. So if you sell 12, you lose two, that's 14 out of 100. Your replacement rate is gonna be 14%. So for our model, um, we use FAPRI, um, which they do a 10 year projection on prices. And, um, these are the same people that actually testify in front of the Senate and House on, on they, they, they have them in to talk about what's happening in industry. Um, and so they're used quite a bit and our lawmakers use them whether they're right or wrong. Um, but they do a 10 year, every year they do a baseline 10 year projection. So, you can, so they kind of talk about where prices are headed in the future. And we'll talk about why that's important when you're buying heifers. And then what we did is we took that and then we modified it to kind of fit Nebraska because we have our Goodmanson Ag Lab that's got a cow herd up, at, up in the Sand Hills. Uh, and we, so we kind of tailored it towards that. And if you look at our, our rental rates that we use, that is in the Sand Hills in North Central Nebraska. You can get the real estate report. You can see that uh, it ranged from a low of 51, 51 per cow calf pair up to a high of 69.31. Um, for, for an average rental fee of 61.45 per cow calf pair per month. And so that's figured into our costs. Our costs are real similar. Uh, our average cost is real similar to what Fabry come with come up with. I think ours is about ten dollars more. Um, we figured uh, the cost of replacements in here at eleven hundred dollars. Um, you could put any amount in, but we just did eleven hundred. That's what they were kind of selling for when we first started this. Of course, heifers have went up since then. So, um, but but again, when we look at when we look at the break-even values, you'll have a higher price than that. <clears throat> and we assume replacements were purchased with cash. So what you did as a producer is you went and took money out of your business and um, put it into into replacement cows. You didn't borrow it; you took it out of your business. Um, the reason we did that is because. If you do buy them and you have to pay interest, it's gonna depend on what your interest cost is. And what we're doing is we're just taking it out of the cattle operation funds and, and replacing them that way. And it'll, it'll still work out about the same way, but it's a little different way of looking at it than a lot, a lot of people do. Um, and then we looked at the change in asset value over the life of that cow. So 
did she bring money into the operation or did she actually lose the operation money and cost you money and took money away from your operation for other things? You know, there's four factors that affect the value for retaining and, and purchasing replacements. Of course, longevity is, is a big one and that's the replacement heifer's ability to stay in the herd as a productive unit. When we sell those heifers early on, we lose money on them. Um, uh, pr a prime example would be um, on our low cost heifers. When we, when we put that in the scenario, we had, a, he we had a, a heifer that fell out at two years of age. She lost, even though she was low cost, she lost that operation $355 because she didn't raise enough calves to pay for herself. Um, the, but a 12 year old cow with a low cost herd, she actually brought into the cow herd $3,000 because of her calf sales and everything. So um, that longevity is pretty darn important um, in what you can pay for a heifer. And of course, cost versus value, uh, both current and future expected differences between cost and revenue. So let's say calf prices, um, what, what are they doing? Are they going down or are they going up? It's gonna make a difference if they're going up and you're at the bottom, you're gonna make a lot of money on that cow. But if you buy a heifer at the top of the market and you're gonna lose money as that as prices go down, that heifer may be a, may have quite a few losing calves that lose money. And so she's not worth as much because of, because of that. Um, and then um, depending on, you know, what kind of calf she has, uh, the size and weight can make a difference too, which is genetic and phen the genetic and phenotypical cap cap compatibility with your herd or with her, with her herd mates is going to be important. So Let's say you, you're you're used to you're used to Charlotte or Angus Hereford cows, or and you buy some Simmental Angus cows, which may be different. Those calves are going to be different than those those Angus Hereford calves and those Angus calves, and and so when you go to sell them, they may sort them off. They may not be as the cows may not be as compatible. It depends on um, what you have genetically. If you have Charlotte cows and you buy Angus cows, um, they're gonna they're gonna behave different. They're gonna require different amounts of feed. So you want to buy something that kind of fits with your genotype and your and your phenotype both. And then of course, you know what's your operator goals and management styles. Some people, if you're in the eastern part of the state, you may have a lot of corn to feed cows. In the in the western part of the state, you may not be able to feed those cows as much. So they may not be as be able to be as big as those cows in the eastern part of the state just because you don't have the feed resources in the West that you would in the East. Just some things to think about. So we use three replacement rates, 14%, um, 20%, and 28%. Um, and just because most people, you know, 14, 20 is probably average, but I know a lot of people that are 14 or a little less depending on, uh, on their operation. And we kind of looked at Goodmanson's data when we come up with these numbers. And we also use three costs of production. Um, we used seven, seven, 16, 16 per cow, which was our low cost herd. 780, 50 was our average. And I think um, Safri had theirs at like 760 or something. So we were per, our average is about the same price they used in theirs. And then high of 831.20. So, so what do we come up with? So we put those, those figures in and what it told us is those 14% replacement rate cows, those ones that are more have more longevity to them, um, you could pay up to $2,128 um, for that heifer and, and she's gonna break even, not make profit, she's gonna break even. So anything under that is gonna benefit your operation is going to bring more money into your operation. Does that make sense? And then on a 20%, about a $1,700 heifer, and then a 28% call rate of $1,400. And you can see there's quite a difference between 20 and 28%. People that have a high replacement rate or their cows don't last as long uh, can't afford to pay as much. Now, if they're selling cows at a younger age where they're getting more for them, that's a different scenario than this. 
this is how long the cow actually lasts in the herd and how long she's productive. So we also looked at forecasted change in assets. Um, basically, that's just saying that that the cow put this money into your operation by purchasing her. So you can see that the low cost cow at 14% um, with the 10 years of data that we have, that cow brought in about $1,000 and 27, 1,027 into the operation from her production. If we look at the average cost, it was about $710 and the high cost was 39, that's at 14%. You go to 20%, you notice it's getting lower as you go down here. Um, the low cost, again, again at 20%, they all brought money into the operation, just not as much as, as the 14%. And we get down to the 28%, actually, those cows lost money, the ones that were high cost, high replacement. So that's what you want to avoid because they took actually $64.33 out of your operation. You lost that much on that cow. So um, high cost, high replacement rate, you can't pay as much. And in some cases, you'll, you'll still, you still can lose money um, in that situation. So um, that's why we wanna find cows that last longer in the herd and um, try to keep our costs down so that we can we can pay more and actually have more return from that cow. It's always hard to push costs down, but boy, it's really, really important in, in even buying replacement heifers. This is just a table. So let's say that your herd, instead of a 14% call rate, you have a 16% call rate. So we're gonna look at a scenario with a 16%. You can use this table to tell you how much you could afford to pay that might be different than what we come up with. So what you would do is we know that the average cost is 780.50 and where that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna use here. Um, going from a 14 to a 20 percent so we're going to a higher replacement rate. So we took 14 minus 16 that gives you two percent difference. okay If you take that two percent difference times that 4172 that's how much per, percentage, um, that's $83.44. So instead of paying $18.12, you pay, you get, your break even is $17.28.74. So you as a producer could use this table to actually figure what your break even is. And then if we look at it on a cost basis, so for every dollar increase, uh, or decrease in production costs, and in this case, I've got an increase, um, you're gonna have a difference of, of um, so much. So we're gonna figure on this one, 14% replacement rate at a cost of 790.50, which is $10 more. Notice I made it easy, 780 minus 7, 790, so there's $10 difference there, you're $10 higher, so you can pay $10 less, so 10 times five, that's $50 less that you can pay for that, for that animal. That gives you a break even of 1762. So that's how you would use these tables and they're on my, um, you can go to our, our uh, beef, beef Watch article and you can look at this table and it'll give you the same information or I assume you'll be able to watch this and get on and look at this table through PowerPoint also. The other thing we looked at um, when we were putting this program together is what was the probability of a cow paying off or exceeding her $1,100 replacement cost? So for that, for that low cost cow, it was 76% low cost, high fertility means she's gonna last a long, longer time. Um, even on average, that cow that lasts longer, you can see 71% of the time, she has a probability of paying off. So if, so if I was looking at, at heifers here, and um, I only had a 36% chance of, of her paying off, 
I probably wouldn't buy those heifers. And that's that's what this kind of tells you is, hey, what's the chance that you're going to be pretty successful? And what I found is I had some young producers that bought heifers really high a few years ago. And they're like, we just can't make any money on our cows. And I think the reason is, is, is some of these things we're showing. Okay, this is, la this is last year's prediction compared to this year's. Big difference. Why is there so much difference? So last year, even our, even our low cost cows, we could only pay a thousand, a replacement errors, we can only pay 1,060 for them. This year we're almost double. What's the difference? Okay, if you look at their prediction on prices, in 2019, they had, um, they had 2020 as being $5 lower than uh, the, the, the 2019 prices. So this year would be $5 lower. And they also had, they had it continue on to where 21 was $9 higher. Or it was high, $9 lower again. So it, so it kept going down in price. So if we look at the cattle cycle, it was going down instead of up. This year, Fafri's prediction showed calves bringing 315 higher into 2021 and $5.56 higher per hundred weight in 2022. So the cattle, the cattle cycle and the cattle prices are going up. So you're buying those cows at a pretty low time and she's gonna have a lot of profitability because remember she lasts 10 years and that's the key. She does, it's just not over two years, it's over a 10 year period. So prices will change and we know our, our cattle cycle lasts about 10 years. So that's the reason everybody was laughing at her prices last year. In fact, I was kind of embarrassed to put them on because they were so low compared to what cattle were bringing. But then you look at this year's, it's a complete different story. Part of it's just, just difference in what they're predicting for cattle prices. So it just goes to show their predictions aren't always correct. They do the best they can. So if we, in summary, if we look at this, um, increased productivity without altering cost or changing replacement rates is going to increase the amount that can be paid for that replacement heifer. Productivity changes such as calving rate, calf growth rate. You know, if you sell more calves on the same number of cows, if they're heavier, all that's going to increase that, that value on that cow. Revenue changes are created by cattle prices will also affect replacement heifer break even. So yes, if you're buying heifers at the top of the cycle, when cattle are their highest, and prices are gonna go down every year, uh, that could be a losing deal for you if you pay too much for that heifer. Um, if you're at the bottom of the cycle and you, you pay, usually you pay lower because the prices are down, that's the time when you start, you can really uh, start to pay more as, as, as prices go up because you have more years of good prices where you're profitable. But, but those revenue changes are going to really affect your replacement heifer break-even value. And then, whoops, ah, sorry. And then higher prices lead to higher break-even values. So while lower ones lead to lower break-even values. So as the prices go down, heifers are worth less, prices start going up. Long-term, heifers are worth more. And that last, you know, I guess that last point may seem a little obvious, but, but remember, it's complicated because the heifer's productive life span can, can be a decade, can be 10 years. And so depending on what the price span during that time is, is going to determine the, the value of that heifer, that replacement. If calf prices tend to trend higher over time and assuming costs are fixed, heifer break even values are going to increase. On the other hand, if it's just the opposite, they're going to decrease. So, so as a producer uh, that's economically successful producer, you, you're going to buy those replacement heifers for no more than what is needed in net returns over their lifetime. And we know that when you're bidding in a market, there's always going to be a challenge to pay more, right? Because you really like those heifers. But the key, key is, is, is to kind of watch, you know, what, what, 
put settle you settle down on a baseline price that you're going to pay and then try to stick to it. And I had a producer um, last year that told me he looked at our prices and he said, I was able to find some that were good heifers for your price. And he said, I think it's going to help me in the long run. And, and so I was glad to hear that he was able to do that. It's not always that easy to do, um, but, but you need to watch that um, and, and try to have that baseline when you're, when you're buying, know what you're going to spend. And most producers do, um, but sometimes people get carried away and then it, then what it costs them is maybe their operation or, or they may have to sell some cows because of that. And my, my father's a perfect example. He bought in the seventies when cattle right before they dropped and bought some really expensive heifers and it almost cost him to go bankrupt. So it's really, it's, it's not a little thing when we're looking at this. The longevity of heifer replacements increase average herd age increases. So, the longer you have those cows, your herd, your herd age increases and break-even value increases, except in years when costs exceed revenue. And that's when the prices are going down. Um, and there is years when we sometimes sell at a loss or close to a loss. And, and those are hard years for us. That's why we have to kind of save when they're high. Low cost, low replacement heifers can afford higher replacement value, replace heifer values and replace capital faster in their operation. So holding your costs down is really beneficial to you on, on what you can pay for a heifer. And it, in the long term, it's gonna benefit your operation and putting more money back into the operation. When raising our purchase or purchasing replacement heifers, each heifer's value is based on, again, her ability to stay in the herd and the producer's ability to manage that productivity. Control your cost, as I said, and use the market to their advantage. So the higher you can sell your calves for, um, if you develop a niche or things, that's going to benefit you. If you can keep your cost down as you know best possible, sometimes being the low cost producer doesn't always mean you're going to be the most profitable. But holding those costs down as best you can is going to help you be more profitable and sustainable. And if you apply those principles, I, it's key in and making an operation more profitable. And this picture I've got here on this cow, um, just so you know, she's on her, what did I figure, her ninth calf. This cow has been a very profitable cow. You can see what kind of calf she raises. You can see the nine in her ear, she's a 2009 cow, and she's, she's pregnant again this year. Those are the kind of cows that keep us in business. Those ones that fall out their first year or their second year or their third year are cows that lose us money. So when we're looking at genetics and other things, we wanna find something that's gonna match our forage base, our feed resources, and actually your goals and, and what you're trying to do with your operation. Um, there's, I've got a link to last year's, or yeah, to, to this year's Beef Watch article and also to uh, Aaron Berger did a nice job of addressing cow-calf ownership costs, talking about depreciation that really fits in with buying replacements or saving replacements. Remember, just because you're saving a replacement heifer does not mean you're any different than somebody's buy-in. So you still need to watch your costs uh, and try to follow that, that guideline um, to be profitable also, because you, you still have feed in her, you still have production in her and it's the same for you as it is that person that's buying only you're just paying it out of your operational cost. I don't know if I went too fast, um, but um, I really appreciate you, you listening and hopefully there's some things that you gained from this. I wanna thank Matt Stockton, our farm and ranch management specialist out of the West Central Research Extension and Education Center who helped um, put this together. Um, he, and then to T.L. Meyer for helping me write it up and hopefully get it into terms that everybody understands.